that? Well, because they like to be able to lay all the pages out, and that's maybe how they'll read your paper. I will tell you that 90% of us do not read your papers front to back. We read your papers how? What would you guess? Knowing what you understand from the presentation of this information, what's the first page most profs will look at? If you don't have that done well, they don't even look at the rest of your paper. Why? Because we're playing a game. And the game is what? Well, all writing that you're doing is uh, research writing. There it is. Research writing. And if you ain't got this done right, you ain't done that right. And if you ain't done that right, there ain't no point in looking at this. No point. It doesn't make any sense. Right? Why? Because your history prof is not sitting down to read your paper on the three causes of the American Civil War to see if you came up with a new reason that maybe that prof had never heard of. That ain't the game we're playing. Okay? Especially at the undergraduate level. What that prof wants to know is, can you play the game of doing this? Okay. What is out there in the research that is specific to the topic? Final comment. You have to start to be more critical in our age, especially of Google. You have to start to be more critical of your source work. In other words, you want to find the most recent. So, for example, I'm going to write a paper on abortion, and I'm going to provide statistics from 2011. Or from 2011. Dude, I'm writing a paper in 2013. I don't want source work from 2011. I need it from 2012, 2013. You got me? So as you start to do research, you want to be paying particularly close attention to the date of the information. Is it, now I'll use an academic term, timely? In other words, is it within recent time period? And if you're not sure, don't use it. Go find something else. Okay? Questions, observations, concerns. That's a lot of intel to throw at you. And of course, the reading of what is it, 2021, whatever it is, uh, yeah, 21, 22. Those two chapters are obviously going to just kind of back up a lot of what I've just introduced to you. I got to be honest, though. If it was me, the first thing I would do before I even read anything out of Axel Rod Cooper is I just go online and I would take a look at the MLA style book website. I would. Uh, especially if they have a link that's like what's new or something like that. You know, you might be able to just find. The other thing I would do is I would, if, I, if I'm still confused about this, I would just go to YouTube and let somebody else tell me how, how to do it even in more detail. Because okay? I didn't get into a lot of the weeds. I don't do it because it's there, it's there for you. But if you really are a person who learns that way more visually, there are online, there are people who literally will say, let me show you how to do the citation of a works cited page beginning with the author's last name. Finally, in terms of formatting, it's usually standard protocol that you are working with 10-point Times New Roman, although there are other fonts that work, but you want to stay away from any kind of non-traditional fonts. No, none of that cursive crap, none of that. Okay, You want your paper to look very, very standard in its font in terms of its size. I even recommend a way from 12-point from font. 10-point font is usually the standard, 10 to 211, simply because a lot of profs are now becoming more serious about uh, paper conservation. They don't want your papers looking really you know, longer because you increase the font size and that kind of thing. So tr traditional papers, 10-point times do Roman, double-spaced, and all of that, of course, now can easily be done with software, huh? So it's not as difficult as it once was when you went... You literally roll the paper into the computer, into the uh, typewriter, and you had to draw a little line with pencil before you put the paper in to identify where you were going to stop because underneath that line was where you put your footnoting information. And this onion paper was very thin, and if it and, and it and it tore really easy, and if you hit the wrong key, you didn't have any kind of deletion type of mechanism before the days when you even had this tape stuff that you put in to change. And some profs didn't let you do it anyway. And so if you hit one wrong key, you had to take the paper out and you had to start all over again. And so a 10-page paper literally could take you 20, 30 hours just to type it, which is why a lot of students began to pay people to type their papers for them. They would write them, and then somebody else, a professional, would type the paper for you. And you could make good bank. There were people making up to $10 a page in the old days just for typing these papers up. But today, of course, we can, we can crank out papers so much faster. Some have argued, though, that the quality of the prose has gone down, which leads us now to our chap from the teaching company.